Hey guys, it's Matt from Three Tears for Cake. You got Rachel in the background and our littlest one, Leland, here. And we're going to do a tutorial today for you on our mummy cake. The mummy cake, or the mummy coffin cake. And Leland, what did you name our little mummy guy? Jeff. Jeff with a G E. He's so. Joff. Oh, Joffrey, right? <laughs> it's Joffrey. It's Joffrey. Okay. So we're going to do a quick tutorial for you guys. Um, Jeff, the mummy coffin cake. Joffrey. And here's a picture of what he looks like. Right here. So I'm going to give you a, a quick brief on the hyperlapse that you just saw as far as the structure build goes. Um, in that hyperlapse, basically, I measured out and cut our baseboard here. It's just three quarter inch uh, plywood. And then um, you got your backer board and then your two middle boards in there for structure wise along with we use a 5 16th rod and nuts and flat washers basically it was it's pretty easy so I cut my baseboard I used a template as far as our mummy goes here for the coffin just traced it out and cut it out to, to spec there and then we decided where our center boards for the cake would go and measured those based off of our drawing here too so we got one right up here where the coffin comes to a point and then one down here about midway up um, easy enough you just take your your measurements as far as your how deep you want the cake to go as far as your um, your depth um, in which for this case we're using five inches is about what we got right here <clears throat> and then we made our measurement across here and then across there and cut boards to, for each of those uh, simple enough uh, we took our, our rod, our threaded rod here, uh, measured it, added the length of your board because you want to have enough to, to get a nut, at least full thread engagement on the bottom, and then also at the top. Um, so I cut one at 14 inches for this uh, particular case, and then put it all together just to kind of give you an idea of what the structure itself is supposed to look like. So we'll be taking this apart and kind of building it back together as we go um, putting the cake on the board and everything. <clears throat> and easy enough to make it stand up. You just got you some L brackets down here um, You don't have to necessarily place it on the board like we have we just kind of wanted to give it a little bit of dimension uh, Make it look cool. So we kind of put it a kitty corner on the, the board itself um, But you can do it straight you do it pretty much however you want to you have the board long ways or you can do it like we did um, Fairly simple enough if you have any questions uh, shoot us an email a message whatever uh, we'll be glad to help out uh, we're going to continue on with the tutorial now. Uh, we're going to show you the, the actual making of the cake and everything, and then we'll go from stacking and everything. The biggest thing before we start putting cake on the board, you want to sanitize all this. Uh, so I you know, I've, uh, did some sanding on the boards itself, and we're going to cover the entire uh, board in the uh, aluminum tape here. And you can either use things like uh, medical tape to cover the, the threaded rod or aluminum tape as well. Uh, for this particular case, we're going to use the aluminum tape. We like using it. It's pretty easy to put on. Um, but that's pretty much it. So enjoy the rest of the video. Hey guys. Okay, so before we get started on the actual caking portion, there's one more step that I always do at this point, and it's putting on the ribbon because once your cake is put together, it's a real pain in the keister to try and flip it around and move it in a way that you can get the glue on it without worrying about it. So we're gonna hot glue our ribbon on first, but I found the cutest at Walmart for like super cheap, like a dollar something. We've got orange craft ribbon. It's 25 mil, uh, millimeter by 2.74. It's basically one inch by nine feet. So it's three yards of the orange sparkle. And then we found this, which is amazing to zhuzh it up a little bit. So we're gonna stick this on top of that, all the way around the edge. This is, it doesn't really say, just as craft ribbon, three fourths inch by six feet, which is two yards. So they're just Walmart brand. Uh, I found them on an end cap when I was leaving the store, so maybe you will too. So we're gonna hyperlapse this part because there's no need for you to listen to us stand around stupidly hot gluing things.
Okay, so we put the aluminum foil tape only up to the first nut, took the washer off. So that way, once we slide the cake down, we can clean the rod off again, put our board down, then aluminum foil tape up to where the next line is, oh, right here, and then put the next nut and washer on to stop it and go from there. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get your nuts and washers down onto it. So that's why we've only done it to here and stop for now. Okay, so if you notice, this color cake is not this color cake because, well, this isn't for a client. This is for a tutorial. This is also for, we're taking it on the news. We're donating it to our local fire station. Um, so when we ran out of Coco Noir, because we vastly underestimated the amount of cake we needed, we just went ahead and baked up a regular chocolate cake, tossed that on there. 
So it's sort of spliced together all willy-nilly, but you get the idea. Cake frosting, cake frosting, cake frosting, nut washer, food safe them with the tape, board. Nut and washer, food safe them, food safe your rod up until the next point, add your cake, blah, 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 and continue to the very, very top. Now we're at the part where you're going to start seeing it actually come to life, which is, ah, yay. So you need to turn your cake as close to sideways as you can. Make sure you use a really long, fine serrated knife. Kind of find where your boards are and gently, gentle, gentle, gentle sawing motions go down your cake. Now we want ours to kind of have almost like a, a bit of a diagonal, like a lean to it. So from about here, we're going to start taking it up just a smidge to the next board and then just a smidge more to the next one, to the edge of the coffin. Can you pause that for me? And so I want our coffin to have sort of a, a wonkiness to it. So I'm taking this back down a little bit and just taking the edge in just a hair. So we're going to clean up our knife. And in the meantime, we're going to gather up all of this and clean up the board. Okay, so this part gets a little crazy. So you're gonna take your template, which we've cut out and completely covered in packing tape so that we can stick it right up onto the cake. This is so not my idea. I have stolen this idea from Liz Merrick and Mike McCary and other geniuses who have a much better idea what they're doing than I do, or we do. Poor Matt's over here kneading behind the camera. If you see the camera jiggle jaggling, he's kneading the living daylights out of a whole bunch of modeling chocolate, making sure that every last little bit of it has no knots in it. Because modeling chocolate is amazing for sculpting tape. However, you can totally see all the little knots and bumps and bits. And for those of you who don't understand what she's talking about, when you make your modeling chocolate, a lot of times, once it sets up, your cocoa butter that hasn't fully incorporated will solidify. So, I don't know, you probably can't see it on camera. But you'll get tiny little pieces of cocoa butter, the white little flakes in here, and knots that haven't fully incorporated. So, you basically have to knead them and knead them and knead them and knead them which is why I sit back there doing that the whole time she's doing this stuff. So you get nice, smooth modeling chocolate to work with. I am working, I promise. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna take your template and take your knife and very carefully go down along the lines of your template, following the lines of your backboard, and then following the lines of your template. without sawing your fingers off. That would be preferable. And then when we get down to this part, it's kind of self-explanatory. You just go ahead and skip around the mummy wrappings, etc. And the arm. just going to go ahead and tidy everything up and ganache the little daylights out of it. So we'll hyperlapse that because if at this point you don't know how to ganache something, you probably shouldn't be making a sculpted cake yet. And we can move back and teach you how to ganache something later.
Okay, so now that it's chill, we're going to put on a second coat of ganache, maybe a third coat, until we get everything as smoothed out as we like and give ourselves crisp edges. I use a hot palette knife and a jug of water and wipe off my knife in between each round. So we're gonna hyperlapse the rest of that as we ganache, ganache, ganache for days and stick it back into the fridge to chill in between each round. Okay, so for the sake of the tutorial and cameras being able to move all the way around it, we're going to make sure that we cover this in ganache as well on the back because we will be putting orange modeling chocolate on the back as well because it will be visible. So that is why there's going to be ganache on the back. Otherwise, I would use a printed contact paper or something else to, to cover that so that you don't have to waste ingredients. But for this, for the sake of this, um, definitely since it's going to be visible from all, all the way around, we want to make sure that it looks good. So.
Okay, so now we're gonna move on to doing our little mummy guy and we're gonna let him start hardening up a little bit, probably stick him in the fridge for a moment or two. Uh, Cause we're making him out of all modeling chocolate so he'll stick to the modeling chocolate coffin. Um, he's gonna be mostly 2D because we don't want him to be too heavy where he's gonna fall off and we didn't wanna do something super structural for this. So what we're gonna do is roll out a semi-thick piece and since I don't have a cutter this size, I'm going to use a six inch cake pan and press it over. I'm going to use uh, Leslie Wright's technique from the Royal Bakery where she lays saran wrap or cling film over the top of her fondant or modeling chocolate and then presses down because it gives things a really nice kind of dome shape. And we're gonna see if that works. If it doesn't work, then you will see me adjust. Okay, so I am now going to just use a Dresden tool and basically give myself an idea of where I want my eye line to show up. The mouth can be done at any point later. <coughs> that did not hardly work because it is taped. We'll see how hard we have to press in to get it. All right, there we go. Sorry, if you hear my child in the background, he's playing Xbox, which is the bane of my existence. This is literally my every day, all day. Okay, so now we've got a general outline for what we want to do with our eyes. I'm going to take a little bit of 50-50, which is half modeling chocolate, half um, fondant, which you don't need hardly any of for this. I'm going to roll it relatively thin because we really, really don't want to add too much bulk because we want the wrappings that we're going to make to be a little bit more um, protruding than the eyes. Once we get the general shape of this on here, then I will go back and add water if it doesn't feel like it's sticking. It usually sticks really well, but you just, with the cornstarch, sometimes cornstarch on to modeling chocolate, it won't stay. And 
and this does not have to be exact because your wrappings can come up and overlap, etc. It looks like it's sticking really well, so we don't even need to add water. Uh, so next we're going to do some white modeling chocolate, and then we will color that with yellow, a um, little bit of yellow and orange petal dust. You like how Matt's like tossing me things from the background? Since people know you're there now, could you go ahead and hand me some yellow petal dust, please? Sure thing. Yellow, maybe a little bit of orange. That's luster dust in that bucket. The bottom one is petal. Thank you. When you're working with modeling chocolate like this, for smaller pieces, you have to go really quickly and they can't get too small and fine because unfortunately working with your hands on it is just, um, it's just gonna melt it. Would you also get me a little artist palette out of the cake cabinet please to put the petal dust colors in? We're going to do the same technique, laying this over top. And pressing in. Doing it one at a time so that I can make sure. And I'm cutting it just a little bit longer than I absolutely have to have so that I can Stick them wherever I want to. Just set that to the side for a second. While she's getting that ready to utilize the mat the vast majority of time we have here which is not much this morning <laughs> i'm going to start working on making the little spiders that are hanging off his coffin and the one that he's holding in his hand um, to do that and take some black modeling chocolate i'm going to add a little bit of tylos powder so they kind of harden up so they'll uh sit up where they need to be and everything so I'm gonna do that while she's working on this and then I'll show you in a hyperlapse basically how to make the little spiders we got a little bit of purple sanding sugar with some disco disco dust inside we're gonna mix that up and it'll give them a little bit of a shine and everything sparkle a little bit then I'm gonna use some tools to uh, make some eye holes and some leg holes and we'll be using some red dusted beads here to make the eyeballs and then legs later on. So I'm gonna work on that a little bit, get that started while she finishes up our mummy's face. Um, I actually need a tiny bit of water. Oh, thank you, honey. I'm using uh, yellow petal dust and lemon extract to paint onto the eyes because I can layer it. It dries really quickly. It actually goes onto the modeling chocolate really well. I'm probably completely out of frame. How about that? And it's okay if we go a little bit over, if we get any down on here or here, maybe not in the grain, but on the sides, just because 
again, our mummy wrappings are gonna kinda come over that. This will dry relatively quickly. I keep my lemon extract in a plastic eyedropper squeezy bottle. Um, it's the best thing ever. It makes it so much easier. I use it for all of our painting, um, etc., things like that. So lemon extract just dries really nicely and it doesn't have that grain alcohol smell. I do still have to use grain alcohol sometimes, but I prefer the lemon extract if I can make it work. To get along these sides, I am using a very nice thin brush, a flat brush, so that I can use the bristles as basically a guide along the edge of the chocolate to get down on there so hopefully it doesn't get too much onto the green. Not that it's the end of the world because we can use lemon extract or uh, grain alcohol like a eraser, basically. Especially with petal dust. Okay, so that's that. Now we're just going to use a tiny bit of black fondant and make some little eyeballs and attach those. And then we'll go to making strips onto our little fellow's face. And we will use the exact same technique with his body in hyperlapse. But since I can't use the press technique, it'll be lay out and kind of shape with my hands and try to round it. But I want his head to be more bulby or bulbous than the majority of his body, except maybe the tummy area. I'll make that a little bit poochier on him. Um, so we'll see what shape he actually ends up. Okay, so I got my spider bodies rolled out here and varying sizes and everything like we have up on the picture. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave a couple of them whole, especially like the one for his hand and then some to sit up on top of the coffin and everything. These ones that are on the front side of the coffin, we're going to go ahead and take a couple of these and we're going to lop off about a quarter of each of these balls so it's more of like a 2D effect so it'll stick to the modeling chocolate easier. So you just take your palette knife or exacto, cut a little bit off. And voila, now you got some 3D ones and then you got some 2Ds to stick on the front of it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush them with the, the glue here and then I'm gonna roll them into our sanding sugar and then we'll use the ball tool to make your eye sockets and your leg sockets and then we'll uh, put some eyeballs in them and let them harden and on the eyeballs um, you can do as many as you want to but we're going to do three in kind of a v-shape um, so i'll show you how i'm going to end up doing that just make your three tiny little impressions like that and you can do that after they're dusted in the sanding sugar and everything and then put your eyeballs in with a, a little pair of tweezers so you don't need a whole lot of tools for this. It's pretty simple and it goes pretty quickly, um, but I'll go ahead and do some of those right now in the hyperlapse.
Hey guys, now that we've got our little, we've got our eyes on, um, we're about to start covering them in bandages. Before we do that, you need to dust around to give just a little bit more dimension. Um, I was going to use a lighter orange, but it kind of started fading into it. So I'm using a much brighter, kind of a, almost a ruddy orange and on, on a dry brush. And I'm just kind of going sideways with the brush, not like straight up and down, but sideways in a circle, a, cir a semi-circle pattern. Circular. Yeah, circular pattern. I can't word today. Just ignore me. Don't worry, I'm still over here kneading the chocolate. Just re-kneading it for the 50th time mm -hmm. to make sure it's as smooth as we want it. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> When you make tutorials And that's why we hyperlapse a lot of stuff so that you don't have to hear the the amazingness that happens at our house. So now that you get the general idea, I'll go ahead and hyperlapse doing the other eye so you can see what it looks like when it's finished. All right, so now we're at the part where we're going to start covering our coffin here with modeling chocolate. There's many different ways you can do this. However, we are going to panel this one. Um, so Rachel has cut out some parchment paper that we're going to roll it out on so we can literally just pick it up and panel it on. Um, easiest thing to do is to take your measurements, so get your height and everything, and you're going to want to roll it a little bit longer than what it is. And then you take your width and you can cut off your parchment paper to fit your generalized size that you're going for. So we're going to start rolling the sides out. We're going to start paneling the sides first and then the top and then we'll put our front and back on. Okay, so now that I've got the sides rolled out, we're gonna stick these in the fridge for about 10 minutes and let them chill so that they harden up so that when we lift them and put them on, they're just a little bit more manageable and we can use a straight razor to slice them down perfectly. Okay, so we already got this up here because my, my sweet 
14 year old was supposed to hit video and hit hyperlapse, which is fine. There's a whole lot of whole lot of happening around here. You're fired, not you? Yeah, you're fired. It should be on there pretty good at this point. The cake is cold, but it's been sitting out for about 20, 30 minutes or so. So the ganache is starting to warm up a little bit. So it's nice and tacky. Oh, that's beautiful. That makes our lives about four billion times easier. Second side. And then you will work very quickly using a straight edge and go down parallel with the cake. You do not want to cut off too much and you don't want to end up taking off a whole bunch of ganache either. You guys can learn right along with Matt. This is the first time he's done this, so. No, it's not. It's the first time you've done it with You lie. Edge. You lie. Do you lie? Yep. This just gets it on there really nice and easy. This way you're not using an absolute metric ton <clears throat> of cornstarch, which with modeling chocolate, you have to use cornstarch. It's it's basically the only thing. It's your only option. You never know how much of an artist control freak you are until somebody else has to help you do something. Uh-huh. Uh, anyway. I do this at the nuclear plant all the time. I'm not there to see yeah. it. Try to keep it perpendicular to the cake and not at an angle, so that when you put your front piece on, you get a nice, even, but up against it. Attachable, yeah. That, and it's a little difficult because we're trying to follow sort of the wonky lines that we put into the coffin. But the Matt's, closer you can get it, the better. That's doing a fantastic job. So now you can see a little bit, get it as close as possible. That way, when you panel the next one, you get a clean, easy fit. And the modeling chocolate, you can basically make that seam disappear like nothing. It makes it super easy. So we're going to go ahead and stick the top on, and then the front piece. And then hopefully we'll still have enough of our orange modeling chocolate to do the backer. If not, we will use some gray that we have and do that as a separate back piece. So we'll go ahead and hyperlapse that since this is getting long.
Okay, so on the front piece, I left a little tiny bit of extra on the front as it overhangs, just because it is a really big piece and I wanna make sure that it seals really well. So I gave it a little extra lip so that we can very gently pull it back over. And then with the heat of our hand, the palm of our hand, our fingertips, We'll smooth it, and then once it's completely smoothed to the way we want it, and if there's still a seam, which there very likely will be, we will use our mini blowtorch and melt it just a smidge and soften it up, and it will help those seams to disappear. But every time you touch one of the corners and one of the edges, you need to flatten the top, flatten the side, flatten the top, flatten the side, to keep those really crisp edges. This is legitimately my favorite tool. <laughs> that is Matt's. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a wood uh, clay sculpting tool. It was like a $2 set of clay sculpting tools. It and literally it comes as like a 12 piece kit or something like that. It's And we use like two pieces easy. out of the whole thing. Yeah. But that's just because this is the one that I love. I use it for faces. I use it for all kinds of sculpting etc. So we're going to go ahead and use the warmth of our fingers. Um, I did use a paintbrush with very, very, very little water, just tacky on the inner part of the seam, just a bit to get it to first sort of stick. And the ganache is going to keep this, it's going to keep this on there. I mean, it should not come away, but this is an extra safety measure to kind of keep it looking really nice and we'll do a close-up later on and show you what it looks like um, once the seams are closed up and then we'll go ahead and just hyperlapse this portion to speed it along Okay, so we're gonna score in some of these like tufting marks and probably make them just a little bit more exaggerated than they need to be and then we'll shave those. So I literally held the little guy up there, pressed with this, give yourself a really good push. it back and then put those in. I'm taking this tool at sort of a, instead of cutting in like this, I'm going to press in here and cut in because it's going to, instead of leaving a hard line, it's softening that line as it is. 
so one edge of it is hard and one edge is softer. So it'll make it look a little bit more like tufting on a coffin, like the inside of a coffin. Not that this necessarily has to be the inside, it just adds some dimension to it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then I will dry dust all of that. And we'll start on the mummy as soon as we get the hypolax done of the back, since the back is chilling. Okay, so now we're on to the fun part where we're gonna add our bandages, our into our mummy body, etc. To get our mummy to stick onto the front of this, because it's going to be really heavy modeling chocolate off the front of this, we don't want it to peel away. So I'm using tongue depressor slash popsicle sticks and inserting them where the board is above the board so it has something to hold on to, and then snipping it off where it sticks out. So that's where my second board is, and that's where our little guy's belly is gonna be. About right there. 
And then we will do the same with his arm. Only his arm will need to be a little closer to here-ish. So it'll have something to grab onto. And then I will hyperlapse the actual part of shaping his body. Okay, so trying to film this without any help at this time of night is interesting. So, <laughs> just excuse me. Um, we're gonna paint on some spider webs up into the different corners using petal dust and lemon extract. I have no idea if this is in frame, so give me one second. I'm gonna guess. So, this really truly is just sort of guesstimate e, And I'm painting backwards here so that you can see. Make sure you don't use your cake too much for pressure to put your hand or arm on because you'll end up melting a spot into it, which is not amazing. And then we're just gonna go around and attach our little webs. Not yet. After this dries, it's first time we'll see if I like it, and we may have to go over the second layer to really make it bright and pop enough. you get the gist of that so now I'm gonna go ahead and stop it I'll hyperlapse and probably put another one down here and I'm gonna go ahead and attach a couple of our spiders to get an idea of where the legs are gonna go Okay, I'm ridiculous. So I'm going to figure out how to add the hanging spider first to this little nubbin basically that's going to be our mummy's uh, outstretched hand. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use a piece of floral wire and make a basic kind of a corkscrew shape with my pliers. pinch it in shape like this. And then I'm going to take one of our spiders. 
Turn the feet upside down. Trying to figure out which slider to use. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and insert that right through the, the hole. Just widening that hole a little bit so the floral wire can make it through there without <clears throat> getting caught up. And then kind of pressing that coil into our gum paste spider. Now the gum paste has hardened really, really well at this point. So it's not something that I feel like we have to worry about. Figure out about how far down you want it to hang. I think I might pull his piece out just a smidge. Just gonna go ahead and wrap it around here really snug and then probably gonna tape it down with a little bit of aluminum foil tape in place so that it won't move. And then when we add the modeling chocolate over top and some black fondant along the edges, it should look like we have a little floating spider friend. So I'm gonna go ahead and Hyperlapse showing how I'm going to make the shape of the body, which is going to be in the exact same fashion as I did the head. Just going to kind of round it with my hands. I'll go a little bit slower and kind of show. And then once we have the shape on, or right before we put the shape on, we'll cut out a bunch of bandages and then highlight the edges in green and see our little project come to life.
Okay, so I had a genius idea and I really wanted to try it and it looked really cool, so we're gonna we're gonna try this. I wanted our cake to have a little more dimension, a little more texture. So ignore the spider legs that are currently in in progress. But I have this brand new piece of um, non-skid mat. So I tried to press it and uh, do it like an impression onto the cake, but unfortunately it just wouldn't stick or wouldn't take without putting a lot of pressure. And you don't wanna put pressure on it at this point. So what I did was use my blowtorch really lightly wait till it kind of softened it just a smidge and then pressed it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again on Hyperlapse, show you guys that I'm gonna add the legs. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of confectioner's glaze to brighten all of our little red spider eyes. Ignore the hands. And we'll see if any of these spider legs work. It's just gum paste. And then we're attaching our mummy who is finished. Um, so we'll highlight this with the dust like we did earlier and see what happens.